You're watching EVH and Gear TV, brought to you by Design 39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. An official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com. And now, here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH artist Eric Broadbent. Hey everyone, it is a weekend. Happy Friday to you all and welcome to EVH and Gear TV. We are live. Tonight's very special guest sitting in with me is guitarist Mike Orlando. Mike, how are you? What is going on, man? It's great to be speaking to you. It's awesome. It's awesome to have you. Thank you very much. I'm really glad we were, we've been talking about this for quite some time. I'm happy to finally have you here talking yeah. some guitar, talking some Adrenaline Mod, talking about Son Sonic Stomp Studios, Adam yeah. Reaver and Futone. Man, we got a full house tonight. Oh, it's great, man. I, it, I love talking guitar. Good. It's the one thing that, you know, I could, I could do uh, no matter what. No matter what demons fly through the, the head, uh, guitar always seems to be like, ah, this is great. That's good. I think you're, you, you came to the right place because there's going to be a lot of people I've seen on pop in the chat right now, too, that can want to talk some guitar, too. So oh, I love it, man. Let's jump right into it. Let's say hi to a few people over quickly over in the chat. We've got cool. Terry St. Cummins here, Quentin James, Dave Carer, Mike Francis, my beautiful uh, better half, Nocturnal Butterfly, keeping things nice and clean in the chat. Scott Roos, Gary Dadlin, and Dave. Okay, so yeah, Dave Kerr saying hi, Mike, and everyone's uh, jumping in saying hi. Uh, oh, there he is, the man of the hour, our, our brother from another uh, brass block mother, Mr. F. Hutone. <laughs> What's up, Adam? Hey, yeah. I absolutely love him. He's one of my favorite people on this crazy planet Earth. You want to know something? If I was talking to you without the camera on, you yeah. sound like Adam. You have Adam's I, kind of, I don't know what the word is, the the dialect, the, you sound like him. You've been hanging around with him too much. It's been a long time, man. <laughs> He's definitely a brother from another mother. <laughs> he is. Love you, bro. We love him. Hey, thanks so much for joining Adam. Paul Perkins is here as well, too. Uh, and Mark Taylor's jumping in. So guys and girls over in the chat, we'll jump back over to you soon. But we just had a bit of a uh, holiday. Well, you had a bit of a holiday. We had our Canada Day a few days back. Did you do anything special for July 4th? You just chill, have some barbecues or anything like that? Uh, just hung out, man. You know, uh, my family kind of uh, groups the nearest birthdays and puts them on a holiday. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it's like you always get this, you know, conglomeration of, hey, it's 4th of July, but it's also my niece, Kelly, and my uh, nephew, uh, Michael's birthday, so we just had one big bash. Yeah, it's actually smart. It's actually smart. You know? Yeah, it's cool because everybody's together and stuff. And then at night, uh, you know, went back to my my girl Dana's and uh, watched uh, Method Man blow up the block. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I saw some picture on Facebook today. Um, some some guy, I'm not sure what state it was in, Missouri or something like that. I don't know where it was, but he was throwing fireworks from his car, and then he had fireworks in the car, and, and it blew back in. Oh my and, god! Yeah, and and the car the car exploded. The guy survived it, um, but you could see like a house, like nearby house that actually had holes in the siding and everything too. Like it must have been firing like rockets. Eh? What is wrong with some people? I I just I don't get it. You know, you light a fuse, you run, and that's it. <laughs> exactly. I know. And that's the thing, too. I remember as a kid, too, I know I don't mean to get off on the fireworks uh, uh, tangent, yeah. but I remember um, one of my, my friends and my very first bass player in a band, his dad was um, uh, one of the Ontario police, uh, provincial police we have here. They're kind of like the, the bigger cops here. And he would confiscate, you know, illegal stuff from from people I like, can't this. yeah, wick, like alcohol, you know, a, a contraband and fireworks. And then he'd give them to his kid. You know, and then so uh, yeah, my yeah, band had yeah. the best fireworks ever, anywhere. You know, we had the same, bro. Same set. I grew up with the same thing. Uh, you know, that's awesome. I, I won't give away names, but we would have van fulls of, of fireworks. For oh, jeez. <laughs> Confiscated from other people. Oh, oh that's wicked. So we have similar passions. That's great. <laughs> Here, here's the first question that's not from me. This is from a fan. This is from Terry St. Cummins, and this couldn't actually be uh, a better question. I'm wearing the Eruption shirt. Uh, we're, it's yeah. an Eddie Van Halen theme show. Okay. He says, what is your favorite cover of Eruption? Oh, man. That's, I know it's a loaded question. And maybe yeah. even maybe oh, even a few I favorites. Mean, some, someone else? I, there's there's just too many. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You know, that that's that's a tough question, man. It I, is. He, he should get a prize because he stumped me. <laughs> I know. This was like, you know, stumped the mic. There's know, so. 
I, I did a video on it a while back. I did a, I, I, basically my opinion. It was three guys uh, on the planet that I thought were my favorites. Um, okay, reverse order, three to one. Um, okay. Was a young Canadian, Jacob DeRaps out of Montreal. He's, he's an amazing player. He's one of those guys that can play through a plexi with nothing else and sound like Eddie, whereas a lot of us can have effects in between and we don't still don't sound like Eddie. So he's number three, and he, he could be number one or two easily too. Just that was my pick. Uh, Dweezil Zappa, number two. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. And then Pete Thorne, um, which I think he, his video uh, he did a while back, uh, well, actually 2008, he was actually teaching you how to do it on, on YouTube. I go back to it all the time. He's got the tone. He's got the you know, the feel, all those little nuances that we, yep. uh, and we'll talk about that. We have, I have a question coming up for you later on too, about this mystique that follows Eddie around that it's almost like, you know, did the man land on the moon and what was he using? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that's pretty awesome. It's, it's all his hands. I know. I know. It's amazing. Uh, Robert Appel's apples here. Uh, Futon says the Northeast thing with, with the accent and the, uh, the dialect. Uh, Blue Smurf is here saying, I love the show. And Pete Thorne is uh, really good. Uh, that is uh, definitely true. So let's jump into the guitar. When did you start playing yeah. it and really what got you into it? Wow. Um, I started around eight or nine. Okay. I, and uh, it was my father. My father um, would, he would always play uh, Les Paul and Mary Ford for me. Nice. And while he was working out, my dad was Mr. America and, uh, you know, one of the, the best bodybuilders, you know, of his time. So mm -hmm. when he would be home, and just working out or whatnot, he would he would start playing Les Paul and Mary Ford, How High the Moon, Via Candios. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. Lover, all those incredible guitar, uh, you know, songs, so clean, so fast, multi-tracked, harmonized. Every I was just blown away from, you know, when he pressed play. So that was it. It was my dad started me, and it was Les Paul all the way for me. Who, who really got me started on guitar, not rock guitar. Right, right. Guitar, like, you know, I've, I've said it numerous times in the show. Like, people would never believe this if, if I didn't say it a couple times. Um, people say, who are my influences? And I, I don't usually credit these people, but mm -hmm. uh, my mom, now not my dad, my mom was Les Paul and Mary Ford, like yeah. religious. Um, uh, Burl Ives, um, uh, Chet Atkins uh, was... Uh, Chester, uh, Chester and Lester. yeah. I, and she, my mom would always say, Eric, why can't you play like Chet? And I'm, I'm like, mom, because he's not using distortion and there's no dive bombs. And, you know, and I would give anything now today to this day to be able to play a Chet Atkins riff if I could. Yeah, I mean, it, it, amazing stuff back then. And it was, yeah, it was so clean and they were so precise and, and the speed was off the charts. But, you know, every note just flying off the board. So I, I, I was hooked, you know. Yeah, yeah. From, it's so cool, you know, because people would not look to you and a lot of metal guys and rock and roll guys. Like, no, there's no Les Paul in your influences. There's no Mary Ford. There's none of this. But sure enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's the great thing about influences. And I learned this a, a long time ago. And sometimes it, they come through. Sometimes they don't. But they don't have to come through. Mm -mm, Just mm -mm. because you're influenced. Uh, you know, I, I'm influenced from everything. You know, as far as my musical styles, I can listen to everything from Sade to... Mushroom head or Slipknot. Mm -hmm. it influences like it doesn't have to poke through, and that's for me. Yeah, it was Les Paul. It still is. I, I I just watched his show Chasing Sound, a documentary the other night on TV, and they looped them the shows. Uh, I probably watched it three times. I mean, because I I just don't sleep anymore. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm a complete night owl, and just watched Chasing Sound. Yeah. Uh, less documentary. Because it's it's just it's mind blowing. I mean, it's amazing. You could say you could say poetry and art can be an influence as well too. It doesn't have to be a musical artist. Yeah. That could be an influence. To totally agree, hundred yeah. percent. So it doesn't matter what makes you want to create art. It just that it did it is incredible. That's right. So. The influence and inspiration. Yep. Yeah. I agree. That's awesome. Uh, Paul Perkins, uh, who's a big fan, he has a good question too as well. You guys are making it really easy for me tonight. Thank you so much. I might just turn off my iPad and just kind of. <laughs> this is great. Uh, Paul Perkins awesome. says, 
Yeah. Paul posted a really nice uh, picture, I guess a limited edition Les Paul on his Facebook. He, it's really cool when it's kind of a, um, a smoke black uh, quilt top with a big speed le- on a Les Paul. Beautiful guitar. He said there's only 25 or 50 of them made. I saw that earlier today, but that's not his question. He says, um, Mike, in your opinion, what is the best new metal album in 2018? Curious on your thoughts about the new Striper album. And I'm just going to interject a little bit with that, too. You've been, how, how do you like your buddy, uh, Mike, over in uh, Sons of Apollo? That's doing pretty well, too. But we maybe throw it. He's, he's killing it. Uh, I mean, you know, multiple friends in that band. I've known Ron Bull since I was 14. You know, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Uh, incredible guy, incredible guitar player. You know, love him, man. Mike is killing it. Uh, and I'm also friends with Jeff. He's, you know, one of the best out there. The whole band is amazing. Something and, uh, else. Billy, Derek, I mean, it's 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 great. I, I love that they're, um, you know, that there's that kind of band out there now. Mm-hmm. Killing it. Any favorites yeah. of yours right now? Like something that you think, wow, this is something to, to watch out for in 2018 as far as metal? My, my bro Christian in uh, Stone Sour. Okay, nice. That's good. I don't know what you know what you consider metal, or whatnot. To me, it's it's you know it's it's all music. Um, you know, I, I have such a, a diverse kind of selection of what I listen to. Sure. You know? so it, it's tough, man. I, I love it all. You know, I, I'm a, a huge uh, fan of. There's something cool in everything. And Striper, his question as well. Do you like it? Yeah, Oz is awesome, man. I just did. I just did a uh, a Randy Rhodes remembered in Vegas, yeah, yeah. not too long ago, uh, with Oz and man, what what, what an awesome guy, great player. Uh, it, it was it was so cool. We we did uh, over the mountain together. I oh, think. that'd be awesome. We did, yeah. It was. I'm pretty sure it was myself and uh, and Oz and uh, Monty Pittman, another dear friend of mine. Yeah, and it's it was so great to to play with Oz. I've been a fan since you know since Soldiers Under Command. Uh, <laughs> is that the, that's the name of the song? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's wicked. Oz was on the show actually. Both Mike, Michael and Oz. Uh, Michael was on probably uh, about six months ago, and Oz was just on about a month ago. Sweet. They're amazing. I mean, he still he has, still has such an incredible angelic voice, and I know and it's always had such a great tone. As mm-hmm. well, which is is not just for me, not just plugging into an amp and oh, that amp has great tone. No, your hands have great tone. Oh yeah, and those guys have great just feel, you know, and just uh, mm-hmm. they, they always have. It's always sounded so so uh, perfect. I know a lot of the guys that watch this show. I mean, those guys are both Michael and Oz are definitely influential because people are chasing their tone just like they're chasing Eddie's tone as well. So they've done something I, right. Yep, I I totally agree. You know, yeah. I had, always been off off to those guys and uh especially you know knowing Oz and getting to play with him he's, he's just one of the coolest dudes <laughs> that's right you have uh some family here if i got it right let me see if i i lost it where was it at um oh i lost it ronnie and jelly says hi mike family here watching angel oh wow yeah what the wrong? <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry if i pronounce it right angel yeah okay I, I i'm the worst for pronunciation um <laughs> Let me see what else we got here. Scott Roos says, love Chad Atkins' guitar playing. Kenny Carpenter says, hello, guys. Uh, love Stone Sour. Um, and uh, Kenny Carpenter saw you guys at M3 a few years ago. Great band. And uh, Quentin James just said, he says, I've just done two Gordon Lightfoot videos. How's that for music diversity? Exactly. Hell yeah. Yeah. Man, that's, that's killer. So, keep it keep it wide. That's right. So always when guests come on the show, I always like, I, I kind of do this for self kind of knowledge just to, to get in people's wheelhouse. But I like to ask people this question. What was the first thing you heard from Van Halen, the first song? Um, and how did it influence you? Do you remember the first song you heard from them? Yeah, it was Eruption. Was it really? Yeah. Wicked. Uh, See, now I, I wish I could say I came in on Eruption because that would be great. That wasn't my introduction. So, okay, so how old were you and what did it do to you? Oh, man, being that I'm only 30 now, it was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it was after it came out, you know, I had to, had to backtrack a bit yep. um, because I had not gotten into to rock, you know, mm-hmm. for years af- after I started guitar. Um, but yeah, it was eruption and man, it, it was that sound. <laughs> it was everything. Oh my God. It was the attack. It was. Come on! I mean, it just blew me off my 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 chair. I didn't even know what it was. You know, was, holy cow! I mean, I had been getting into other music, other rock, and hearing other things, but that was just like 
the holy cow moment where I wanted to, you know, be a rock guitar player. <laughs> it's just like, all right, I need some kind of distortion pedal here. Yeah. <laughs> How am I going to create that? You know, and you never do. Cause it's, you that's know, right. That's right. No, no one matches the king, Edward, uh, you know. But we, we always strive, and that, that's what's great. It's that benchmark that never gets achieved, and that's what's great about it. Yeah, it's like you're on a it's, treadmill, and you're close, you're close, you're close, but you're never going to reach the end of it. Yeah, you don't want to, because that's, that's that thing. It's that top of the mountain. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get to the top of the mountain. I just want to keep climbing and creating. I like that. I actually, I've never really heard it said as, you know, we don't really want to. And as much as I think we want to, I think you're right. We don't want to, because that pedestal, yeah. right? We're putting him up on that pedestal, and we're never going to yeah. get to it anyways, but you don't want to. Yeah, that's cool. But that's the top of the mountain. He, he, he gets to... He's earned his, his spot there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just like, oh, man, you know, I, I ain't even going up there. But, and it's also cool, too, to have that constant uh, inspiration and goals to reach. And, and whether it's sound or a lick or technique or whatever you, whatever you strive for. To mm-hmm. see anything you like about someone like Eddie. And there's so many different things. So Yeah. We alluded to this at the start of the program, and the question I was going to ask you is, or kind of a point, first of all, is the fact that there's, around Eddie, there's this folklore, right? Everyone's, okay, so his Marshall was modded, no, it wasn't, and, you know, he's got this, he's got that, Um, and a lot of mystique follows him, and I think sometimes even Eddie doesn't remember what he did at a certain time, so he'll just say something, you know, or he'll think it was this way, so there's all this mystique. Can you think of any other guitar players, like, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix is no longer with us and things like that, but... Any guitar yeah. players that come to mind that have such a folklore and mystique around them like Eddie does? Randy Rose. Okay, good one. Good point, yeah. The, the, the great, amazing Randy Rose, you know, uh, who we all adore. Yeah. You know, um, sure, yeah. Well, what kind of speakers did he use? What's this? I got to get that MXR Distortion Plus. Yes, so I could yeah. this, you know, what was the Marshalls? Were they modern? You know, there was, there was that mystique, you mm-hmm. know, um, and again, it was so great because it, it, it drove you, you know. But back then, it wasn't like, hey, let me go on YouTube and see what he's using because I could go to a rig rundown. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, holy cow, what is he using? I don't know. How do I get this from what I got, yeah. you know? And so it was, uh, it was a different time. That's right. But for me, it was Randy. It was always just, you know, that's the other guy who, who was like, you know, it was Eddie and, and Randy where you just, wow, what's that sound? How'd they create that? And the is fact it one that, track? Is it three tracks? Is it yeah. four months? You know? <laughs> now, now, you being a recording engineer and a, a very good one, um, right. is that is that true that Randy would uh, triple track most of his leads? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. And, yeah, and you could hear it. Uh, I thought so. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny. People think, let me track more and more and it's going to sound huge. But it sounds, it doesn't, it sounds different. It, it almost blurs the sound a little bit, but creates this wide chorusing effect. But mm-hmm. it's like a human chorusing effect, which is the beauty of double tracking. And triple tracking just makes it even, you know, more wide and, and uh, chorus-like. So, yeah, its leads were just, at least, you know, back then it was just like, oh, my God, how do you, how do you recreate that? Yeah. And then there's Eddie, who's the total opposite. You know, one track, one guitar, there's reverb only on the right side of the speaker, and he just killed it in that one take, and it was amazing. So, yeah. Wow, like, you know, it was amazing stuff. You know what's so funny? You go back and you read, like, uh, Greg Renau's book, Van Halen Rising. And think, have you read that book? I did not yet. You should no. check it out. You'll do yourself a favor and check that book out. It's really good. And then yeah. there's Noel Monk's book as well, too. Uh, Greg's is my favorite. But it's so funny, you, you look, go back in time, and, you know, um, uh, Ted Templeman was, like, trying to, okay, Eddie, we need you to overdub here. And Eddie's like, but I don't like this overdub thing, right? And then, fast forward a little bit to the future, now Eddie's going crazy uh, a little bit. No, I'm not saying too far in the future, but yeah, Eddie's going crazy yeah. with overdubs, and Ted Templeman's like, hey, Eddie, slow down on the overdubs. It's amazing how you, you kind of go full circle. Yeah, well, yeah, he, he was also evolving as, of course. you know, as a... Uh, being in the studio, you know, album after album and yep. want to try other things. I totally get it. Yep. You know, oh, yeah. But, uh, but it's it, that first initial show, you know, holy cow, man, this is uh, one guitar, you yeah. know, and you could just hear it. That's, that's right. That's how amazing he was and still is. 
you know, when you're talking about in the studio and you're, you know, double tracking, triple tracking, like when it comes to rhythms, you know, we're sitting there with the click track and we're do doing our rhythm yeah. guitars, you know, not, not necessarily as hard, but imagine mm -hmm. Randy having to play those leads like note for an, a, a, any guitar player playing his own lead again, two times, three times is not an easy task, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. I, I mean, once, once in a blue, I'll do it, but I'm, I'm of the early Eddie uh, mindset. I, I lay one solo track down. That's it. Yeah. Um, I like that. It's just, I don't know. I guess it's from Eddie, you know, it, it's, uh, it's just that, you know, ingrained in, in me, that type of sound, you know, I've double tracked harmonies. Yeah. Obviously, you know, um, and stuff like that, but usually 95% of the time, everything is just, yeah. One solo track. I liked even with the slightly slightly newer Van Halen one. When I say slightly newer, I'm still in the David Lee Roth era. Um, but I liked stuff where, you know, there were some overdubs, but when they're live, all it was was Mike holding that. And even though there is key key rhythm parts that, you know, were on the album, they just yep. sounded so nice. Like some of those bootlegs were just beautiful. It was just Mike carrying yeah. the, you know? Which shows what an incredible band they were because, yeah, you could drop the anything else that was on the album cut it down to drums, bass, guitar, and, and they still sounded so incredible. Yeah, know? yeah. Here's, here's something I didn't even have on the itinerary, but I'm going to get, since we're on a Van Halen theme for a quick second, sure. I want to get your opinion on this. I've said this many times on the show, and I've shared it with other guests, and they've shared their feedback on it. I kind of, I kind of credit um, three things for that, for that swing sound. And, you know, Eddie and Alex, they can play together. Like, you know, they've been playing together since they are you know, old enough to walk you know, pretty much. But um, I credit three things to that swing. One is their father, uh, you know, a seasoned, you know, jazz musician. Um, number two, the fact that they had played together without a bass player and they had to fill in that gap. And then yeah. I really like to give credit here is to David Lee Roth for coming into the into the group and saying, look, guys, we need to get people up dancing and shaking, drinking, That's blah, 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 and bringing in the R&B kind of feel. Do you agree with that for that swing sound That's that evolved? 100%, man. You, you hit it right on the head. Um, Dave, Dave had a swag. He had a swing. Mm -hmm. that, that was just his thing, you know. Um, of course, Eddie and Alex are, you know, they're joined at the hip, and he makes a right. Alex is right there. He turns quick to the left. He's right there. And if they're not, it still sounds great when, when they, when they, you know, went different ways. Um, I, I totally agree with you, one hundred percent on that. Yeah. Awesome. It's, cool. Yeah, definitely. There's a real swing there for sure. The next thing I want to jump into your uh, your other uh, the other Mike sent me the cover, uh, actually a copy of uh, Adrenaline Mob, and he says yeah. he puts a note on here. We cover Romeo Delight on this. So what was that like tracking that in the studio? And you did a phenomenal version of that, by the way. Ah, oh, thank you, man. Um, I mean, tracking it was was awesome. Uh, you know, playing with with Mike, uh, he's one of the greatest drummers in the world. Yeah. So it's, it was incredible. It was really. He, it was so laid back. He was in the drum room. I was in the in the in the console room and just tracking. It was just me and him laying down the tracks. Uh, sometimes you know Russ would sing along with us the scratch track. Um, I don't remember which songs exactly, but real laid back. A lot of fun. Uh, Mike's amazing. Yeah, he's just like he just blows them out. You know, like one boom 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 one after another and. Uh, we always have a lot of fun doing covers in, in that band. And you do, yeah. do them very well. Uh, uh, thank you. Over Appreciate in the chat, you. Nocturnal Butterfly has posted the link to your YouTube uh, to check it out. And on, on the YouTube, I'll tell fans right now as well, too, uh, there's there's uh, kind of little mini documentaries of tracking that from some of the different right. band members and that, which is really cool. You kind of get your insight. And uh, yeah. Mike Portnoy's as well, I think, as well. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was cool. I, I do remember that now. Yeah, the, that was... Uh, Coverto was the second album, and we did a bunch of making of videos, just us in the studio. Yeah, uh, those are fun. I remember, I remember Russell singing the uh, Barracuda, which was insane. Hell yeah! And Mike's got some funny outtakes too, where he hits his he hits this flying bell, and it flies off and hits him right, you know where. Oh like, no way! <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? It's on YouTube somewhere. Okay. You know? I'll search for that. That's good. I'll have to I, post that. I think. Oh, uh, man. Great times, though. You know, great, great times, uh, you know, recording that stuff. I love the making up stuff. Cause it, yeah, I know. Behind the scenes is, is really cool. That, that was a, a fun album. We did uh, Kill the King from, from Rainbow and uh, Stand Up and Shout, 
some Van Halen mm-hmm. uh, rules. We, we, we had a great time on that album. Some some bands, I, I can appreciate that you guys did that, and I know the fans love that. Some bands just don't get it how much the fans will take anything they can from the band. Like Van Halen yeah. fans are just dying for these vaults to open up of some of these. You yeah. know, a lot of the shows were shot pro shot. Can we see some of the footage? Um, mm-hmm. A while back, this goes back probably a good four or five months at least, uh, Mark Kendall was on from Great White, and he did something really cool. He's he's a fan of all these bands type of things, these videos and documentaries. So Great White, when they recorded in Nashville, um, they recorded the whole thing, you know, staying at the studio, like like pretty much living Excellent. in his house there. Yeah, that was awesome for the fans. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. I love seeing that too. You know, a band you like or a musician shows you, you know, behind the scenes footage and mm-hmm. it, it's great you know we, we've done it a few times um but the cameras roll and, and had some fun and yeah as far as the cover thing uh, you know we love paying tribute to to the, our idols yeah we grew up with like grew up listening to and, and appreciating yeah i think it's you know it, it's um it's a great thing you know you know you you want to do it a little different but then you want to stay true you know it's, it's a fine line with covers it's mm-hmm. it, Kind of a sometimes we did some where we did our own version. Uh, we did a crazy version of Devil in Town, Georgia, with uh, the late great, amazing AJ Pirro on drums, and yeah. uh, had a lot of fun tracking that one. So sometimes you you do your own version, and sometimes you you stay you know true. I can imagine too. It's probably got to be fun because you know years ago, growing up in the scene, like that's all you would do for many years, just to pay the bills and you know get yeah. out there and get a name and cover, 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 cover. So it's nice yep. to kind of go back and kind of you know discover your roots again a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree, hundred percent. And it's so cool to. I always enjoyed recording covers because mm-hmm. it's just so such classic songs that we did break on through from the doors. Oh, and nice. For me, I had grown up listening to to Jim Morrison. My my sister just constantly, you know, played uh, Jim Morrison. She played constantly The Doors and Rush. Oh, nice! <laughs> she was obsessed with both, but, uh, especially Jim Morrison. Are you so a Rush I, fan? Of course. Who is? Awesome! That's great. That's my Canadian boys. I love Rush. Kidding me? My God! Yeah, I, not enough great things to say i know yeah. the first rush concert i saw do you remember a band i, I don't know much about them but Mar- marillion of course yeah sure. I, see, I don't know much and then all oh, they're they're prog rock right okay, yeah. considered i guess i don't know much about them but i remember them opening for them and i'll, yeah. I'll share a really funny story that you might get a kick out of this so okay. uh, something that you can probably appreciate you know going out in public and you know being famous sometimes you just want to have dinner and you know maybe not have to like you like signing autographs and stuff like that taking pictures with people but there's probably times you want your private time I um I went to Toronto one time. I was in Yorkville, and uh, I went to a Jewish delicatessen up there. And Getty Lee's in there with his son and Terry Brown, uh, their man- producer manager, or whatever. And this restaurant had these mirrors all the way around the restaurant, so you could look anywhere in the mirrors and see people all around you. And mm-hmm. I, I I see Getty Lee right away. I know who he is. This was during the Grace Under Pressure time. Oh, sure. And I, I want, I'm starstruck. I want to go meet Getty Lee and my sister. Well, first of all, we walk by, and my sister goes, "Hey, that's that guy from that band, Crush." I'm like, oh, that's not crushed, you know, whatever, right? And so anyways, just, we sit down, I'm yeah. like, I want to go get his autograph. And they're like, no, 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 he, he's here. He's, he, he, let him enjoy his meal. He gets up, go to the bathroom, take his boy to the bathroom. So my brother-in-law says, go ask him now, which is dumb, but go ask him now. So I go in there and I had a matchbook from the table. And I said, um, hey, Mr. Lee, I'm, I'm your biggest fan. Like nowadays, you'd say I've downloaded all your music illegally, yeah. you know. But I, I, I got my Grace Under Pressure cassette, whatever, whatever. Uh, can I have your yeah. autograph? Sure enough, get his autograph. I'm happy. There's an article that comes out in a magazine later on, like Hit Parader or Circus or something like that. Okay. Probably nothing to do with me, but uh, I like to think it was because uh, it says uh, they were interviewing Getty Lee at a, um, at a Blue Jays game, saying, how, you know, how's the success and fame and all that kind of stuff. And he mm-hmm. said, well, it's pretty cool, you know, whatever. But it seems like these days I can't even go to the bathroom without getting asked for an autograph, you know. Ah. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy that was known for asking for the <laughs> autograph in the bathroom. But it's great. Gotta love yeah. Rush. <laughs> That's my story. Yeah, they're amazing. They yeah. are. Um, tell us a little bit about Sonic Stomp, the DVD that you're shooting out. Did you shoot all that over in Brazil? Yes. And what, tell us a little bit about it and uh, when it's coming and where fans can get it. Yeah, I, you know, I, I had shot it uh, a couple of years ago on a few tours ago out in, um, in Brazil. And, uh, you know, with incredible musicians. Uh, you know, Fernando... Casada on bass from mm-hmm. the Van Alternal 
and uh, Shaman, and uh, you know, Junior Corelli on keyboards, and an incredible drummer uh, by the name of Achilles Priester. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a great, it, we, we had a great time. We went in, set it up, shot it live, nine cameras, caught everything we possibly could. Um, so it's, it's really cool. Half of it is, is full band. And uh, doing my some of my sonic stomp material from first and second album, mm -hmm. and then half of it is myself, just playing to the tracks. Um, one track I did just with me and uh, the, the, the piano player, who, who's an incredible player. Um, you'll see all these musicians are just top, top, top shelf. My God, incredible! It's it's, it's a, a pleasure and an honor to to play with them. So. Um, that, yeah, we filmed it, and then, of course, you know, I had gotten uh, busy with Adrenaline Mom. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, I wanted to finish it, and then um, I think uh, went back into the writing sessions for We the People, who was our last, um, which was our last album, sorry. Right. And so, yeah, it's kind of, you know, I, I had to put it aside and just not complete it. And uh, then, obviously, you know, since that tour and that album yeah you know, it's, uh, it's been a year now and uh so I'm, I'm finally you know getting back into it and uh you know i yeah i want to finally put it out uh so i think we're going to do it in the fall and uh i'm super excited really proud of it and i want to re-release the, the first and second albums and uh you know remaster them and re-put them out and then i'll I'll follow it up next year with a, a Sonic Stomp 3 album. So. Fantastic. Yeah, I love, it's, it's guitar music. It's, That's uh, good. Well, that's, we like always, that. Yeah, people always, you know, there's always people, oh, well, it's, it's you know, it's just uh, it's just this, it's just that. You're, you're just, you know, going off on guitar. It's like, well, yeah, it's music. That's right. There's all different kinds of music, man. And, you know, um, there's something for everyone. And this is just one style of what I enjoy playing and, and listening to, you know. That's so, right. Um, just all out guitar music having fun man. that's good and we need some more of that sometimes that's for sure when you're yeah. when you're over there you're doing a lot of clinics too i was reading on your website today a lot of uh was it like for um uh for the guitar companies that you endorse or we did a lot i, I mean i i had i was actually playing with the band for a bit for not with noternal and we did a lot of stuff uh, my first show with them was rock and rio with metallica oh yeah Ninety thousand people uh it, it was amazing you know, and then I, I kept going with the band, and they they joined my Sonic Stomp band, and I was playing with them and back and forth until I couldn't anymore to due to adrenaline mob obligations, obviously. Um, but we always did Sonic Stomp together. Myself, the bass player Fernando Jr., and um, the, all the guys over there, and uh, and uh, Tiago Bianchi, who owns the studio that I recorded the live DVD in. He has an incredible studio, uh, Fusal Studios over in uh, Croatia, that's how you say it, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about an hour and a half out of Sao Paulo. So um, I would always go there. I, I think I've done over a hundred, maybe, hundred clinics and, and shows and uh, all across, uh, you know, over in South America and, and throughout Brazil. Me and Fernando did the bulk of them, the clinics. We we play to you know to the tracks and stuff, and um, it's great. They're massive, you know. We have large crowds. It's really cool. They're mini concerts, you know. It's uh, I can't say more, you know. Yeah. Great things about the people over there. What What so, are some of your takeaways as far as like uh, some really cool moments from from clinics, like just meeting some of the fans or maybe getting to yeah. uh, interact with some guitar players? Yeah, I mean, I I love meeting everyone. I, I I'm that guy that will go, you know, after the show and do do uh, and want to meet everyone. You right. know, I'll, I'll sit there and, and sign autographs all night long. You know, I, I remember doing that. I used to do a lot of tours in uh, China, mm -hmm. and uh, there was one specific venue there. It was great. It was one of the last shows I did in, in Wuhan, China, and there were thousands of people in the audiences. Fantastic show, and I just remember the people being so polite over there. They would keep getting back on the line if they wanted like a couple, few pictures. Nice. I was like, didn't I? Didn't I just see you <laughs> like forty-five minutes ago? Yeah. And it ended up being like a three-hour signing session. Oh man. And I didn't care because you know that that's why we're there. Yeah. That's it. 
fans and, and music lovers are the reason we get to to you know have such a great um, career performing, traveling, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be doing it. So I I I'm always wanting to meet every single one of them and, and thank their and thank them, shake their hands. That's awesome. The third time the guy comes through, you know the kids' names and everything. <laughs> it's like, wait, it's like, what do you? No, you don't. Come on, you don't have to. And you know, was, oh, well, it's, you know. That's yeah. hilarious. No, that's cool though. So nice. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm a regular person, just like you. You know, like they always say, you know, don't uh, thou shalt not worship false idols. My mom used to always say that to me. Obviously, not, not her, not her quote, but I mean, she would say it. And you know, she'd always say, "Be careful of that Van Halen guy. You might meet him, and he might not be." You know, and obviously, he was super nice when I met him. And yeah. but there's some people out there, just celebrities of all walks of life. Uh, uh, you know, actors, musicians, entertainers, comedians. Sometimes you get a good amount of good days. Sometimes not. So it's very cool that you've probably left a lot of positive memories in people's minds. Number one, you're I, the guitar hero, and you know, I always try, man. I always try. I'm very, very thankful for being able to do what I do. I'm extremely thankful. You know, people say, "Oh, it's it's an honor to be you." No, it's an honor for me to play for you. You know, I, I always think of it that way, and I and I try and and, and do the best and, and, and meet everyone I can. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting back to the beginning of that question over in South America and Brazil, the people are just amazing. There is no one moment; they're all great. They're so nice. passionate about the music over there, and uh, I, I can't say enough incredible things about them. It seems like it's such a beautiful country over there, too. I've never been there. I probably never will see it. Um, but it does seem like a very beautiful country. It is. It, it's, it's, it really is. It's huge, too. I mean, geez. But it's all over, all over South America. Sure. And, and, and Europe as well. The, the fans are just so, so passionate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I love it. Van Halen's yeah. well-loved there as well. Van Halen's well-loved everywhere. <laughs> That's true, right? That's right. <laughs> You don't even need that statement. It's That's right. Me. I guess yeah. But there's there's yeah. some good videos that come out of the the tours over there, South American Assault and things like that. That was that was awesome. I and mean, that's some of our favorite bootlegs. Yeah, Wicked. Yeah, so yeah, I want I want I know I'm going to put you on the spot here again, but I want to have you yeah. describe your guitar playing. So a lot of people, I'm not the only person who said this. I've even seen right. I, when sharing some of these social media posts of yours and, and things like that, people are saying like, okay, it's that you, someone sped up your playing, someone sped up the video, and it does look like watching you play. I've never seen anyone attack the guitar the way you do. Like it looks like it sped up 20 times, but what we see is what we get or what we hear. So t tell us your approach yeah. of the guitar and maybe how you describe it. You know, I, I, I have a, it, yeah, it, I think it's hysterical. I, I, it's <laughs> definitely not sped up. Uh, no, of course, know, of course. It's just me playing. <clears throat> um, my, my style in the beginning was always a conglomeration of everything I always liked from so many different players. And when I was a kid, I, I wanted to throw it into a pot and stir it up and try and, you know, take the... Wow, I like the vibrato of this, but I like the attack of that mm -hmm. and this and that. And um, I've always been a fan of drummers. Mm. That's a big thing for me is the beat, the groove, and, and the attack of the drums. And I've, I've always wanted to um, have that percussive attack with Got my it. picking hand. Um, so that, I think, comes through in my playing it is that, um, that real you know, tight staccato left, uh, right hand thing. I agree with uh, that hundred percent with you. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I, it's not just, it's not the only thing that I do, but it's something that, you know, people always say, well, how do you pick like that? Well, I, I don't pick like, uh, I can't play ever. Like someone like Ingrid Malmsteen does. I would almost writes like mm -hmm. a pencil. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, you know, I have a, I, I pick with my whole, my whole arm, you know, my whole, just everything. Jeez, you, know, and you don't get uh, fatigue if you're using your whole arm. No, I never have. Okay, uh, thank God. You know, and uh, my 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 left hand. You know, people always like, well, what the hell are you doing with the, you know, with the left hand? And you know, people always just like, what what is that? What are you doing? Or they'll, they'll make fun of it, or you know, a joke about the the movement of the way I play when I go fast, and it's it's just this weird muting bopping technique that right. I've always learned to. To pop off the string. So if I'm doing these pentatonic licks, I'm not just kind of shaking my hand. I'm, I'm, I'm coming off the string, muting the next one and playing the E, but 
trying to mute the B, and then when I jump to the B, I'm muting the E, and it creates this weird, weird look. And it's just to keep things somewhat clean. Um, I, yeah, I have a strange style. People have yeah. uh, the old comment about it, and or that and my strange, ridiculous faces that I've made. Hey, that's and, great. Uh, I compliment you know, it. Yeah, yeah, and it's great. I could care less, man. No, no, it's like, good. Yeah, no, it's right. a good thing. No, and I, I don't think they're meaning it in a bad way. Like it's like holy oh, crap. God. Yeah. Also, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I mean it like I would never even attempt to try and stop. No, of course. <laughs> faces or smiling or doing because I'm not even thinking about it. So I'm just having fun. Man. Yeah. And, and that's what it's about, you know. I was always, I was always the kind of guy. Don't think too much about it. Right. Right. You know, yeah, man. I don't want to see a guy that's just playing like the album. I can play the album. That's, I exactly. want to see somebody live that makes me laugh and smile and go, "Holy cow!" You know, like <laughs> uh, it's so cool. Did you see when he did that? Or did you see that stupid face that he made? Or you know, damn, he's smiling from ear to ear and he's still having fun. But to me, that's that's what it's about. I like that. You know? Now, a second ago, this is a very silly question, but I saw you make a pick gesture. Do you hold your pick with a middle finger? I wish I had a pick. No, problem. no I don't. No, okay. I don't. Because I thought you did for a second. I was going to say, because that's what Eddie does, right? And I, 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 oh, man. I, I've always wanted to do that. I know. The eruption thing. Yeah. Then, then, then. But you know why I think that's such a good thing? Tell me if you think I'm right on this. Um, that yeah. the Eddie's, I mean, I'm sure there's other guitar. I don't know who else picks like that. I'm sure there's many good guitar players. But yeah. it's like a pendulum. You know, if you pick with that finger, yeah. I can't play a single note that way. But it's like a, you're, it's perfectly yeah. balanced. Mm -hmm. Right. And you'll see his pinky like I mean, I'm making really stupid gestures with my hands here. But, you know, like his pinky will balance. It's just and I it's such a cool way to pick if you can. Yeah. I don't uh, you know, I could never do it. Nope, no, me either. <laughs> well, I heard, you know, I've always when I was a kid. Yeah. I was like, oh, that looks so cool. Yeah. It's kind of this flying. It's like if this is the body, he's like this. Yeah. He is not resting anything. So it's very strange. I, I couldn't do it. I have a very. Uh, odd way of picking. Yeah, uh, just kind of developed over the years. Like, because I wasn't trying to like copy this or that or do this or that. I just kind of, hey, how can I do this? You know, back then it wasn't like, like I said before, there was no like watching YouTube or seeing this. Yeah, I know. It was like play the album and figure out what is he doing. I I don't know, but I think this is it. And then that becomes your style after years. Yeah, you know that's the coolest thing about. Yeah, it's just like I never had books or tablature. Never did. I always tried to figure out things by ear, and to me, that created something different. Mm -hmm. There's the art in that alone. Exactly. I like how you mentioned that too. Like we didn't have the YouTube, and bands didn't have YouTube back in the day, and then videos. We didn't have the much music, so, or like in Canada or the MTVs. Perfect example is Van Halen. Once again, for a reference to that book, you know, Van Halen was known obviously on the party scene as like the the ultimate cover band. And I forget which which, which song you're referencing. I think it was um, "I'm Going Home." I think and Eddie was known for covering that song really well. But the band would uh, people would go watch the band play, and they'd be like, "Wow, these guys do this this cover amazing!" And then all of a sudden, uh, there'd be this one spot in the middle of the song that was just com a complete mess up. Well, it wasn't a mess up; it was perfect, but it was nothing yeah. like the album. And people were like. Eddie, uh, what, what was going on in that part? And he goes, well, our record had a skip in it. None of us could afford to go buy another record, so we couldn't learn that spot, so we had to improvise at that spot. I love it. Isn't that something? It's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's it. It's music, man. There is no follow you know, by number. You know? I know, I know. Yeah. No fools, man. Just just do it. Have fun, you know, and uh, that's how it was for me always. Yeah. Definitely. Couple of cool comments over in the chat. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right again. Dana Griffo says, "Hi, Mike. Looking good." <laughs> and and this is a really funny one. And I think if there isn't such a device or isn't such a, a merchandise item, we have to get one. Uh, wants a Mike Orlando bobblehead. <laughs> now, wouldn't that yeah, be great? That would I mean, because I make stupid faces and I'm all that my would be moment. that'd be great. And then have it have the have the guitar go like up and down, and then have the head going a different way too. That'd be awesome. Oh, totally. Yeah, <laughs> I always get that. I'll have people like you know. <laughs> or they'll comment like you know, lay off the whatever you know, the, the adrenaline or whatever, any kind of you know, speed drug or whatnot. It's just like no, I'm just having fun, man. That's me. Like, you know? That's so right. So a bobblehead would look like me playing. Yeah, it's just kind of shaking back and forth. But hey, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Think about that. I think that'd be a good seller. Yeah. Wicked. Why not? 
tell, tell us a little bit about your gig here again, too. I've got links in the description down below to go to Guitar World, but you run okay. a really cool co uh, column, Mob Rules, there, and I was actually watching right. one of them today, there, one of the Whiplash, uh, in a kind of really quick uh, pentatonic riffs and stuff like that. But tell us when you became a columnist at Guitar World, um, and it's probably kind of a cool thing growing up as a kid thinking, man, w one day I might, I'd love to be associated with a guitar magazine. Here you are. I, Jesus, yeah. It's, it is the biggest honor, uh, even even to if I just did one column, to be to work for them and uh, to be able to just give any little insight of something I do and be associated with one of the greatest guitar magazines in the world. I mean, when I was growing up, it was Guitar World and Guitar Player. Mm -hmm. That's it, you know, and for me. And, uh, oh my God, the honor, it's, it's off the charts for me. You know the people are so great there, and and I love them all. And it's it's such a laid back, uh, you know, environment. You know when you go there, and and uh, that's all it is. I, I walk in and and I I sit down with Andy Alderet, and he's amazing, and uh, everybody there, Jimmy Brown and and uh, Jeff Kitts, who he was amazing as well. Uh, just such a nice like, and then just come in and what do you got? Well, I got these, I got that, I got this kind of licks and. And then just break them down, you know. And that's all it is, man. It's just a little bit of insight, uh, you know. If if someone gets an iota of something from it, job well done. That's all. It's it, a warm, it be, fuzzy feeling. It doesn't feeling. have to be like, hey, well, I can't do. Is that like for beginners? Well, no, but it's for anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to be the simplest little thing you you take away from it. And um, yeah, I, I I love it. I've done I've done a year already of, of columns so, so uh, a year's worth now yeah it's one of it's one of the highlights of, uh, of anything i've ever done you know, so seriously a uh, huge honor for me yeah and the videos that are done there uh, the team that helps you there or whatever whoever it is uh very well produced um you know lapel mic great lighting sound is perfect i mean sometimes you're struggling to see what the guitar player is doing there's multiple yeah. close-ups on the neck it's really good stuff yeah, it's great. I, I, I go in and uh, just plug in, and it's not it's not about hey, I got to get my exact perfect sound, or I, you know, it's got to sound. That's not what it's about. It's a lesson, or it's mm -hmm. just it's just showing licks. It's not like well, I don't have my exact sonic stomp or adrenaline no. off sound. Well, who cares? That's right. That's not what it's about. It's just showing something you know that could hopefully be you know insightful. Yeah, for a guitar. So I don't. I never concentrated on. Oh, that's that's not exactly how I walk in. I plug in and and we go and and it's it's real laid back, you know. So yeah, because your licks are going to be translated to all different types and sounds anyway, so it doesn't really matter what it sounds like in the delivery. Yeah, it's not about that. It, when you're teaching, it's about teaching something. Mm -hmm. you know? hey, this is uh, th this is how I chicken pick, or this is how I do this. Uh, this is how I I do you know triplet runs or whatever, and. Uh, if you take something away from it, great. It's it's more about the lesson than everything else for me. That's right. I made a note because I th I would I know I pronounced it wrong. Or the, the but if you want to search for this on the uh, Guitar World column, it's called Ultra Fast Whiplash Triplet. So if you're you know if you want to go impress your girlfriend on the weekend with some guitar riffs, or you want to imp you're auditioning for a band and you want a couple of riffs that are going to get you the gig. Ultra fast whiplash triplets. That's really really cool. You start off with just two notes per string, then you do a three and I think three and four notes per string. Actually, even like seven notes kind of thing, which is crazy and crazy. But um, yeah. I really enjoyed that one. I'm, I bookmarked it so I can practice it. Ah, oh, thanks, man. It's it's. I've always tried to take like uh, something simplistic. Let's say uh, you know two notes in mm -hmm. a pentatonic box pattern, and uh, instead of just going da 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 a three, okay, well I'll add a triplet quick, mm -hmm. really fast staccato on the first note. So, and it just gives it a little flair. It's just something a little different. I always try to do that with, with the licks. All right, well, how can I spin this one off a little bit, uh, you know? Yeah. A little I, left to center or something like that. I like that. Instead of this a guy walking straight down the path, it's like the drunk guy coming out of the bar at 3 o'clock in the morning is kind of stumble, 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 and walk straight, <laughs> stumble, stumble, stumble. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind or of, a butterfly yeah. or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. however you want yeah. to say it. Yeah. Adding a little, uh, add a little flair to, to a basic lick and make it something different. And, uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of, a lot of that kind of stuff or the whole chicken picking thing to me is like, well, you can't do some people, you can't do that in, in rock. Or you can't do that in metal. Well, sure. Sure. As hell you can. Mm -hmm. you, 
it's, it's not the lick or with the sound. It's it's the technique. Yeah. You know, and apply it. Make it work. Yeah. If I you don't think you can. We'll make it work. That's what's cool about it. You know. I think one of your secrets to success, like you said earlier, was the fact that you've always been infatuated with drums and drummers and, right. and having that rhythm. I think more and more people these days really need to focus on that and get out and jam. Like it's cool to be a shredder at home on the on the couch or the bed or whatever, but get out and play with a drummer and, and get that rhythm locked in and it will really translate and it'll help you tremendously. I, I, I've always loved it from back in the day. I, I remember having a Roland r5 drum machine okay and I, when i was a kid i would program like parts of neil perks drum solos and so if way back in the day i was when drum machines came out even on my uh tr808 roland <laughs> um, back in the day i always was programming my own drums and working on stuff myself and that's how i did every adrenaline mob album i pre-production for all of my stuff even sonic stomp and I write the drums out in pre-production and, and come up with the stuff and just learn knowing about drums and, and, and having a passion for it really helps. Do you, do you play drums a little bit yourself too? I can play drums a little bit, yeah. Can but you? I mean, I, and I have a, 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 a big electronic kit. Yeah. See, I used to. I used to more now, but I don't anymore. Um, but I've always programmed. It, it's, it's always, I, I understand, you know, the knowledge of, quads and triplets mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that. Helps. And that helps. being being around great drummers and having the pleasure and the honor to always play with with great guys you know helps as well yeah you know um, that's uh that's that's great but if you if you can't you still can study drummers and, and know what they're doing and uh i think it, it really helps playing if you put that feel to your to your playing where you, it's like Eddie Eddie's rhythm playing is off the charts forget about soloing oh, I know it's it's, it's a league in its play. own come on uh, he there's no one compares you know I I know, I know that for sure and here's an example which you'll love Brian Young was on the show many many moons ago he played with David Lee Roth and much other bands and yes. um, he, when he joined David Lee Roth um, he's mm -hmm. looking at the set list and he says, Dave, why aren't you? I like when Dave's doing the solo thing with, you know, James Lomenzo, uh, Ray Luger on drums. Um, oh, wow. I saw that tour, which was amazing. He says to Dave, why aren't you doing I'm the one? And, uh, and Dave says, well, the last guitar player couldn't play it. And that's it's, a perfect that's example. A crazy feel. Yeah. That shuffle, yeah, you, right? You got a shuffle swing that thing. Like there's nothing, you know, uh, yeah. Wow. You know, and also speaking of Ray Luger, it is a, a dear friend of mine, and my God, one of the most frightening drummers on this. Sure. Planet. Wow. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. And humble I could as not come. comment on that because every time it's like, Ray, yeah, whoa, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> super, super great dude. Oh, my God. And he's great. out there working his butt off. Yep. Yeah. He, he not only is one of the greatest guys, but one of the all time greatest drummers that could play the simplest thing. And oh, my God just knocks your socks off and happy doing it that's right you know some of these guys are like oh, come on. he's animated and stuff like that which, yeah which i appreciate man you know that that there's something to that like, like i said before i don't want to go see a guy just sound like like, like i'm listening to the album yeah i want you to make me react you yeah. know holy crap you know and man that's someone like ray or like watching eddie come on man. i know up and off the the drum rises, doing the splits, and the, and just the way he always was, and he was all, always just so. For me, Eddie was always smiling and mm -hmm. always and having a good time. That's what I took as well from from watching Eddie, um, which is a, a really big thing, I think. I agree. I, I'm not afraid to admit this either. I mean, it might show like a different emotional side to me, but when I've seen I've seen Van Halen every year since '84 in concert. And with uh, my better half here, Nocturnal Butterfly, Sandra Lee, she's come with me to some concerts. And, and I will have tears in my eyes at certain points in the show where maybe he's doing his solo. Yeah. And uh, just because it really, really, as a guitar player, uh, especially, moves you huge. Moves you. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you don't go to a concert to just sit there and be perfect, have it be perfect. No. You will be moved. You're a perfect, perfect example of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Van Halen. That's it. He moves you when when you when you watch him. Whether it's it makes you smile or it makes you just go, holy cow! You know, 
that's it, you know. Yeah. He pulls that emotion right out of you, you know, and I love that from, from players. That's right. You know? And you know what? You know what sets somebody apart as a good guitar player? All of us are out there trying to copy Eddie's licks, and sometimes the leads we can we can get. Sometimes. Um, that being said, I tried doing Eruption before going live tonight, and I was so mad at myself. But that's a story for another day. Um, w- we can get some of these licks, but then we try to learn the rhythm, and then we're like, "Oh my God, is this guy good?" I know. Man, like the rhythm is the rhythm is harder than the solos. I know it is. It is. I'm glad you said that. It's way harder. Yeah. All right. Perfect example. I'm the one. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have that swing and, and there's a, and the muting of the picking, I know, bopping back and forth on the strings, there's so much to it. It's it might sound simple to some people, but it's man, you go, go try and play it. It's not. It's not at all. It's all. I can almost picture some of these thrash guys using a super, super gate, you know, just a gate every time, and then stop it, you know, because Eddie's actually muting, you know, in between every little 16th note shuffle, you know, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that should be, that should be Guitarist 101. If you think you got it, show me, play that song. That's, that's Judgment Day for you right there. <laughs> yeah, well, there that's you right. go. I mean, that's, it's also why he's sitting on top of that mountain. I know. That's right. Well, we call him the king, you know, many reasons. Adam uh, Reaver says, uh, and this I agree with this. He says Mike killed it on the metal show a while back. I'll post a link later, and uh, for sure we'll share that. Yeah, that's great. But Adam was right behind my amps. Oh, right he, on. He was with me on that metal show. Um, it's, it was great. Yeah, he came and, and set everything up. But yeah, you know, I've I've been with Adam since 2006. F U Tone, you know, and we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll talk about that shortly for sure. It's one of the greatest companies out there and uh he he knows so much about it and uh he actually came and and mic'd my amps and 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 worked with me during the day you know to Mm -hmm. get ready for filming and stuff and uh oh yeah it was so great to do that i mean i love those guys on that metal show that's wicked they're all dear friends of mine and uh i wish it came back but yeah it was an honor to be on it and yep you were part of it that's all that matters yeah, it was a real honor. I got to be on the show as a guest uh, mm-hmm. with the band and uh, then came back as a guest guitarist. So, uh, yeah, huge honor. And you know what? Some people may have actually discovered you through that gig. I mean, obviously, they knew, some people knew you before. Some people knew, yeah. come in later in life. But um, they, uh, some of you found you through that uh, that entity. So that's awesome. Yeah, it was fun, man. I, I, I just went up and, and played some, some licks. I did a, a nice acoustic piece. Did some, you know, some some uh, flamenco-ish style stuff on on my ovation, so that was a little different, and uh, yeah, just showed a couple different faces. That's know. that's wicked. <laughs> a couple points up in the chat. We've got uh, Sean Cook jumping in, saying, uh, "Sorry, I'm late." Uh, Michael Madey's here. Max Raiders here. Uh, let me see here. Um, and a lot of people who was saying it something about drums. Oh yeah. Scott Rue saying, I have great respect for anyone who can play drums. I'm not coordinated enough. And this is the perfect way to segue. And it's a good point, a good way to segue into uh, studio. So some people that may not know, looking at you and you see a nice little display of uh, gear behind you. Some people might think this is your studio. So before we get into talking about that, um, I think that probably translate, I mean, you as an engineer, having a good understanding of drums will help people in the studio, but as a kid growing up, here again, you know, you want to be associated with a guitar magazine. You check that off your bucket list. You're working for a guitar magazine. You probably wanted to have your own recording studio someday. Now you do. Tell us what's behind you and tell us what your actual studio is. Uh, I'm, I'm just in my home right now. So this is, this is, this is where I write. Uh, when I'm, I'm looking at it. That's why I'm, yep. I'm uh, looking at the, the equipment back there. It's, my, it's just my home studio. I have probably tons of guitars in here and uh this is where i write all my music uh so it's just a like a studio b uh but i i try and keep some of the same gear as i have in my real recording studio mm-hmm. which is about five minutes away from me um so i i try and because if i do a track here and i bring it in sometimes it makes it makes it to the album um so i'll have some of the same marshals here and and uh the same console uh, some of the same word clock, you know, getting real technical here, interfaces, word clock, which is very important in um, clocking your gear and stuff like that. So I have a mock setup, sm- much smaller. Um, but in my recording studio, I have much bigger console and um, 
you know, tons of interfaces and, and the whole nine yards. But yeah, this is just my uh, my home studio B. That's nice. So you you kind of get the the vibe working at home a little bit. Working take uh, yeah. maybe even bringing some work home sometimes if you have to. Yeah, I, it's just always been wh where I write. Um, I, I have tons of uh, you know different instruments here and, and, and acoustics and all different kinds of guitars and stuff. Um, but he, again, yeah, it's just I sit here, I write, I do my drums. Uh, I even have a an electronic drum set, a big one in the other room. Mm -hmm. So. I want to hop on there and play something or just sit and write. I have everything I need here, and then I go over to Sonic Stomp Studios and, and do it for real. I like that. Does the, does the electronic kit kind of help as far as like just getting the sound quickly without having to mic everything up and things like that? Yeah, yeah, it's cool for for, uh, for laying down ideas or whatnot. Sometimes I'll, I'll uh, she's, me and AJ, you know, God rest his soul, we used to play here all the time. You know, he used to live up the, on this block, so... He'd walk over and uh, and we would just you know jam on the on the electric, uh, which is which is cool. You know, it's great for that. Yeah, yeah. But well, most of the time, I just sit and I'll, and I'll write it out on my keyboard. I, I literally play the drums if I'm doing a sure. quads. I'll just, yep. It's, I'll, I'll sometimes it's easier, isn't it? Yeah, I just like to do do it like that on a, on a, on a keyboard. Uh, yeah, because and just play the stuff. I don't write with a mouse. Yeah, I, draw. I yeah. I like to just get into like a triplets and or if I feel the feel of them. Yeah, because you can you can compensate. You can physically go behind the beat, off the beat, ahead of the beat, as opposed to painting by number and so robotic yeah. that there's no, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so, so, and it's just pre-production. So that's right. I do, do what I do here, but then I go over to the, the real place. And, Here's here's a question from Sean Cook. He had a, he had a couple of questions. I'll go with the second one here. He says, uh, "Can you compare analog versus digital? Do you have a preference in a mix?" Yeah, I've always been analog. Oh, uh, cool. I've always had consoles. Mm -hmm. I, I still have my one inch sixteen track deck um, in my studio. So, and I'm st I'm both now. Uh, I'm, I'm analog and digital. So, my setup, uh, the digital side of it. And, there's uh, you know four HD uh, units that are modded and, and they feed two synced up consoles, analog consoles. Uh, so I'm digital. I work in Cubase in my which is my DAW of choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, it feeds through all my HD units and it hits the console. So it's digital and analog. I've never been in the box guy. Every Adrenaline Mob album you hear, all my uh, every Sonic Stomp stuff. They've all been done at Sonic Stomp Studios, and it's all been done like that. I, I've I've mixed and mastered every album there since Coverta, mm -hmm. and um, that's my you know my choice. I think it sounds better to some to analog. Right. So uh, I just there are incredible in the box mixes. There's no doubt. I have to me it's like whatever works for you. I, I love it all. I just happen to really like the sound of summing an entire mix to 40 or 48 channels uh you know i usually keep it to about 48. okay and and that's just my my thing i just feel it opens up the mix more and uh so yeah i'm, I'm all about the analog that's and your, it's, <laughs> that's your canvas of choice yeah perfect well there, there's your answer uh sean and ronnie says uh when are we picking up the ssl yes <laughs> uh, yeah i am i am uh i'm going to be acquiring one of those monsters. Oh, nice. So, yeah, we'll see. That, that'll be in part two of our... Okay. Do, now we'll, you... we'll do it down at Sonic Stomp Studios. Okay, so you won't be mirroring, mirroring that one at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. No, it wouldn't even fit. No, I can imagine. That, that's yeah. crazy. Well, I wish you the best of luck with the transition, getting everything in there. And what, what, how, like, this is just me being dumb, not knowing the technology behind it. How long is it going to take you to get it in there, working and ready to roll? Oh, man, it's, it's such a huge task. It really is. A month? Uh, I, I, it's going to take a while. It's literally walls are coming down. Mm -hmm. Is it being removed? Um, the whole thing has to be redone uh, because the, the console's 13 feet long. Jeez. Uh, so it's, you know, w which my console now is 10 feet. So it's not, it's not so much the, not too much bigger. Just, yeah. But the, it's just, it's a, it's a monster. They do come apart 
Mm -hmm. They come in all these different, they call them buckets, right. like channels, and you kind of put it together. But my God, it's such such a, a daunting task. Um, it's It's been a while now, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be great. My, my passion for recording is equal to guitar, so I love it. That's great. We're going to jump over to some Futone, uh, F-U-Tone. I, the, the Canadian in me says Futone. But we're going to jump over that in a second. But before we do, uh, I just wanted to ask you about projects. Um, you know, you've been kind of teasing some things coming up, whatever. Is there anything you can share with us that you might be working with that um, you know, maybe we don't know about? Yeah, I mean, like I, like you had said, and, and, and I posted some clips and stuff, I'll definitely be wrapping up, finally, the Sonic Stomp DVD, which, you know, I'm super excited about. And... Um, you know, it's it's been it's it's been uh, a while. You know, like, mm -hmm. like I said, uh, we had spoke earlier mm -hmm. uh, off the record. Yep. You know, I had filmed it and then had to go into we the people sessions and writing and and stuff. And then obviously most people know you know what what happened. Uh, yes, with the band for the last year. So uh, and it's, again, it's very so that's coming up an anniversary. Time. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, nah, it's cool, man. It's it's been a tough time. So yes. Uh, Say the least. You know, I don't want to get uh, mm -hmm. into because it kind of it's, it's hard for me to talk about. Sure. But uh, but it's been it's been a year now, and uh, I, I want to get back into playing, and it's like a healing process for me. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying it. As just talking guitar with you, it's so great. It it therapy. Like said, it keeps the regular demons uh, at bay. You know, I you know, agree. Talk about guitar. You That's know. Um. Projects, other stuff. I, I've been doing stuff with one of the most amazing singers on the planet. Uh, his name is Corey Glover of the band Living Color. Amazing. And, what, what can I say? Mind blown. That's it. That's all I'll say. I'll just okay. see that mind blown. He's, he's uh, holy. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, working on some some incredible stuff so oh, can't i'm really excited that. about that and um like i said yeah j just you know getting back you know i'm tr trying to trying to find uh the old mic again so uh good yeah i'm getting that man it's coming that's good it, it is therapy for sure and i know i know the more you play the more you're gonna feel uh good internally um which is you know it's just gonna it's gonna re it's gonna reinvent you yeah, I, I, it definitely, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, uh, just even just talking about it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's just like, uh, it's most of the times, you know, you end up being a great pretender. But uh, when I talk music, it's 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 th that real emotion. You know, when I talk guitar, yep, it's great, it's nice. So uh, getting back to it and, and working on stuff slowly but surely um, is a really, it's a medicine that. No one can prescribe. That's right. That big pharma has no control over this one. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and I've, I've had uh, plenty of those. So, yeah. uh, you know, this one is, this one's cool. So I'm, I'm excited about just giving back to some, some cool guitar. That's good. And it's funny, neither one of us have a guitar in our hands at the moment. And we know how fun it is to hold a guitar and just, yeah. hold, just feel that guitar, but let alone play on it. But isn't yeah. it fun as how we can just sit here and talk about guitar yeah. and it still feels as good? It, it is. It's great. I, I mean, especially for me, it's it's been hard to to even mm -hmm. pick. It's been hard to even pick it up for me uh, in the last year. And, yeah. And I and I do. And when I do it, it's like hello, old friend. How you doing? Mm -hmm. You know. So it it is a um. It's it's just uh, you know it's therapy. Okay? You know, it's the best thing. Here's here's yeah. a question for you. This was not planned to ask you, but I look so therapy with guitar. So uh, I'm sure you, even you, uh, even the best guitar players out there, including yourself, struggle some days. Um, now there's days when you're in sync with the guitar. Uh, today was a day where I wasn't in sync with the guitar, and I still battled through it because I'm not going to let the guitar get me. But yeah. if you have a bad day on guitar, what do you do? Yeah, I, I just I put it down. Okay. <laughs> sure. I, we all have those moments of sheer crap okay <laughs> it's like oh man what what am i doing I'm, i sound like i'm falling downstairs um whatever it is for for me it's like you know for me playing is like it's also a physical thing yeah uh, you know if i'm really tired you know like I, we, we spoke before about my the way i pick mm -hmm. you know if if i'm not even feeling 
good, you know, physically, um, it's hard for me to play the way I normally play. You know? Right. Same as a drummer or a singer, it's a vocal instrument. Uh, same thing. So, yeah, some days you're just you're just out of it and uh, I just put it down, or I come back in an hour and then you're, you know, you're killing it again. You know, right. it, it's just the ebb and flow of being a musician. It's not just guitar. It's yeah. like it's with vocals and bass. Sometimes you have a, a vocal session and it's like, oh, it sound like crap. And then you come back to it in a half hour and you, you just killed it. So. Look at some of our favorite sports heroes, you know, like, you know, uh, pitchers that could you know, pitch a no hitter three games in a row. And then all of a sudden the next day they're, they're they can't throw a ball to save their life. Exactly. You know, yeah, it's just uh, everyone has that. Yeah. Every, every musician. Yeah, so don't yeah. be afraid to put it down and uh, and walk away for a little bit. I totally agree. Getting getting a better head, come back more okay. into it. Never never get discouraged. If there's anyone that's like, oh man, I can't do this, like I give up. Mm-hmm. Never give up. That's never. right. That's right. And never let someone tell you you can't do it. Oh God, please! No, you're touching on me. Yeah. If if you can't do a lick who, that you you like from a guitarist that you look up to, mm-hmm. who cares? Make the lick your own then. Great Oh, point. I couldn't do that, but I could do this. Yes. And this is what I got from that. And I, that's how, that's what's all Great about. advice. Great advice. I Thanks. love that. Let's jump into FU Tone. So you were, you were kind of hinting the fact, I think you said 2006 when you met Adam. So yes. share a little bit about the friendship side of it. And we were talking about friendship and business with Adam as well, too. We're, we're both on both sides of that. We're, uh, French, we're, we're great friends with him and we do business with him. But yep. how did you meet Adam and what, is, what do you think he does with uh, FU Tone for guitar players worldwide? Uh, you know, I met Adam, uh, started playing some of his guitars way mm-hmm. back in the day when he was working for some different companies. And... Uh, He's just an incredible guy. He just, he gets it. He knows guitars. He knows, uh, I can't explain it, man. He, there's just a connection that I had with him from from day one. Mm-hmm. He, he just always knew. Like, I didn't have to tell him, you know, uh, you know, what I want. You know, he just knows what to do. Like, if he's, even to this day, he'll be routing his guitar, and I'll be like, oh, my guitar, and, I, and I, <laughs> he'll totally make, make fun of me, and I'll be like, oh just watch this and he's just like shut up i got this and he just <laughs> slaps the thing on and the router comes down and boom who cares if he's just so and i trust him you know i trust him he's not only a great guy but his uh, his insight to what he creates and all the products that he creates is incredible you know he's uh he's a mastermind of that stuff not a lot of people can can look at a guitar and think if i change that piece of metal it's going to create more sustain on that string. That's something, you know, there's a lot more involved to that. You know, so, so for him to take a guitar and to do what he does with the blocks and uh, the titanium saddles and everything that he does in F.U. Tone, man, from day one, when he put, took one of my guitars and started to put his products on there, it was an immediate You'd have to be deaf not to hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You really can hear the sustain and the clarity, and and I love it because you know when you when you're playing uh, in speeds, you know, or you're you're playing fast in general. I've always wanted clarity and to have more of it and clearer and really hear the note or really hear the pick because I like to play staccato and mm-hmm. you know get that real muted fast type playing sound uh, it, um, it helps the, the, the brass blocks help and all the, the saddles and what he does so uh, he's a genius when it comes to, to FU Tone that, that's one of my favorite endorsers by far when it comes to just you know stuff for guitar there's, there's nothing better because just it go works it. haven't it tried works. it try it that's right <laughs> it works that's, that's plain and simple now he's in the chat he says he's cracking up Here's, here's how I describe it to people, because I get people through, obviously, through the the Van Halen influence and things like that. People are always asking me all the time, so Eric, well, tell me about this Futone, Futone, what did you do to your guitar, and what does it do? So I give them two analogies, and you tell me if I'm close here. Number okay. one, people say, well, what does it do to the guitar? I say, okay, take your guitar right now, and you're sitting at your desk, and you're just strumming some chords, whatever. Now take that headstock and put it over on, on your desk, and hold it on the desk as you're playing, and you feel your desk resonate. You feel the guitar come to life, like kind of more, you know, sustained 
insane. And then, so that's what I'm trying to say with the brass blocks and the same yep. example, you know, like you and I, you know, are, we're close to the same age here. Um, we grew up with hi-fi stereos, you know, with a separate uh, turntable, a receiver and a preamplifier and all that kind of stuff. And oh. we're listening to our favorite records and man, they're sounding great. And all of a sudden, you know, we either have a paper road or here in Canada, I would do tassel corn and make some money. I go buy an EQ and bring it home and stick it in my stereo. And I'm like, oh my God, there's tone coming out here that I never had before. Where did that yeah. come from? That's yeah. with the guitar. Like taking a blanket sometimes off the speaker when he when he does the guitar. It's yes. Like, oh, I didn't realize that that could sound better. You know that that's what it was in the beginning. You know it's a and he, he pays attention to detail as from when the sound comes from the wood mm -hmm. and travels through this piece and makes it up here and and he makes you realize it all connects and there are better things that you can do to a guitar mm -hmm. like he does with all his FU tone products and that really do make the notes jump off the guitar they give more clarity uh, tightness it tightens up the guitar it tightens up the sound which is great um, I mean she's, he even does it to to acoustics he even has the you know the, the pins for an acoustic thing so he's so in tune with how can I make something that's great even greater He's literally and, and in tune. He period. Yeah, he's literally in tune. That's right. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. The, 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 that's not even like something that you need, you know, uh, to, to give testimonials. About. Oh, I it's know. Just, like, just try it. Yep. So I, that's all I tell people. I know. Once, once you try it, and the experience never goes away. I always tell people, and I'll, I'd be 100% honest with them, I say, okay, I could tell you to buy the whole package. But here's yeah. where you want to start. If you're on a budget, then here's what you want to start with. You want to get the brass yeah. block. Okay, so get the brass block. That's going to be your big wow moment. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe the titanium or the naval brass inserts that will be will be a tonal improvement as well too. And then from there, I'd be lying if I said every little tiny piece added tone, but it will certainly increase the longevity of the guitar. The stainless steel, uh, you know, lock blocks. I mean, sorry, yeah. the stainless steel string locks, the stainless steel nut locks, uh, yeah. the noise of springs are a huge asset, not necessarily to tone, but to take away noise. Um, Forget about it. The pickup yeah. system for for a less EMS, full stuff EMS. Or, or anything, any any pickup. The fact of what he did with the pickups to sit on the you know his, his system mm -hmm. is uh, man, yeah. It's just like go go to the website, check the videos out, order some stuff. Once you use one thing, you're gonna to want to get every piece. You will. <laughs> it, it will. It will become. It will become a, a, a reoccurring thing because every guitar you have, Floyd or non-Floyd, acoustic yep. or whatever, you're. It's gonna be. You're gonna do every single one, and you'll be thankful and happy every time. Yeah, he does all of my guitars. I mean, it's just hands down. It's like I. I don't play a guitar until I've taken it to Adam. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just like I have new guitars as, as well. You know. Some some have come in and, and I'm I'm waiting, you know, literally to to get them fu'd, <laughs> so to say, um, you know, yeah, it's just like they they they're not complete to me at all until they're they're signed they, off by Adam. That's yeah, right. until until they have the fu tone treatment, the guitar is not it, it's not ready for me to uh, to take out. I'll give you an example, something you'll appreciate. So Adam had one of my, I had one of my guitars sent from EVH uh, gear to Adam directly. It's a purple wolf standard. And I had um, a second one here. So my son Junior has a one, same color, same guitar, same everything. So we had the luxury of having an AB. So um, B came to me or to the boy here and it's stock from the factory. The other mm -hmm. one went, went to Adam before he moved his shop. And he put in a uh, you know, brass block. He, he did the whole treatment other than the claw. I didn't have him change the claw, which I, I probably should have at the time. And he put a kill switch in it as well, too. And it was so cool. He actually called us, uh, FaceTimed us. And it was myself, my uh, better half here, Sandra and Junior. We're on FaceTime. He's playing it. And I'm like, we're just grinning, right? Like little kids. But when I did a shootout video, this was kind of neat. Um, it's, and it's doing pretty well on the channel. I literally took the, I recorded the guitar acoustically and put the guitar right up to the microphone, strummed a chord, and then put Adam's futoned version up there. And you could even see the waveform. I showed it in audition. The waveform was even louder or higher. It, a couple db whatever i don't know this the signal flow but it was louder yeah he, i mean he's he's great too he, he he does videos for the products he shows you what to do this is how you install it this is what you do he, he's very helpful and you know i it's not like i'm i'm trying to pump up his oh his, i know his, uh, company because i don't have to you i know, know. It's, it's amazing he has he has an incredible roster of 
of, of the elite yep. on his on his team on the FU12 team, and there's a reason why. That, that's it. Um, I'm trying to think, think of the, how I can ask this question. Sean Crook says, how does Futone translate into effects? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand it. Sean, if you could kind of elaborate more onto that, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, yeah. And I think Adam just likes the fact when he sees, he'd be happy just to see a picture of someone, a guitar player's face. The moment that they put yeah. that in there, it's like, okay, that says it right there. You don't have to say a word. Post your face. It's true, man. Yeah, it, it definitely has that, that wow factor. Like, damn. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, for sure. My friend Jared's here from uh, Tome Wars, and this is a question um, I was gonna, I was kind of being delicate to ask. He says, uh, "I absolutely love your playing. What are your thoughts on digital platforms such as Helix? I'm a big Helix user here myself. He is as well. Axe FX and Kemper. Do you use those at all, or do you have any thoughts to share on them?" Um, you know, first of all, thank you. Thanks mm -hmm. for the question, and uh, and um, much appreciated. Um, I've I've definitely always been an amp guy. There's there's no doubt. I've I've uh, I've played a Marshall. JCM 800 mm -hmm. since I'm 14 years old, uh, and I also had the first 5150 when it came out. I think it was 91. Nice could, TV. Could not wait. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I to be honest, I just got into it. I mean, I just received uh, a fractal, you know, the latest one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's great. I mean, every every one of those is great. I'm I'm a big advocate of that amps are great. This is that plugin can be great, but it all comes down to the player as well. I, I think if you put Eddie on a modeler, or if you put him on his amp, he's still going to sound like Eddie. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I, I mean, they're all great. I, I don't know them that well. I got to be honest. Um, I, I have the X, and I think it's pretty incredible. I, um, I've, I've used it. I've used it on. Uh, on a recording that I just did uh, for a Disney album. Oh, uh, cool. It's called Super Super Disney Guitar, uh, Guitar Heroes, and uh, a great collection of players, myself, and Zach Wilde, and George Lynch, and uh, Paul Gilbert, and all, uh, Phil X, all these amazing batch of players, which was an honor in itself. And um, and I used the, the Fractal. Nice. Uh, I used the Marshall Profile. So I'm not against it. I, if it sounds good and if it sounds great, Cool, but um, ninety nine point nine percent of the times, so, you know, I'm plugging into an amp. There you go. Very well said. Um, Sean kind of elaborated uh, more in his question, and this this makes sense now. He says, when it comes to tone, resonance, and sustain, do the FX need adjusting? I've never had to adjust any of my effects. I sometimes maybe just hear my guitar more post foot tone, but I don't think yeah. I've ever had to adjust. Have you had to adjust anything? No, no, no and, and I don't. I don't use a lot of effects, right? Uh, so, you know, from from day one, at least the my adrenaline mob touring rig was always, if you, you know, see the pictures, three three Marshall heads, uh, completely inspired by Eddie because it's a wet, dry, wet rig. Mm -hmm. So it's the dry head in the middle, and then the, the uh, delay is spread. Nice. So the left head and the right head, and all three mic'd. Um, I, I'm, so I, but I'm not a big effects guy when it comes to that stuff. I, I, I use the delay sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, once in a while, I, I have my signature uh, Rocktron ball pedal, which is, uh, but no, nothing, I haven't had to adjust anything for when I, once Adam does yeah. the guitar. Yeah, I think you just hear yourself it's more, you just hear yourself more fine. Yeah. It's just like, great. Yep. You know? So I don't use a ton of, uh, of, of distortion either or gain. My sound is, is, is um, a little drier yep. uh, than, than most. Um, so, yeah, it just brings it out. His his uh, Fu Tones products just give it more clarity, more punch. Yeah, which is great. You and Eddie share something very similar because uh, people have the misconception that Eddie is just gain, you know, balls to the wall, and it's not necessarily. It's it's cascading gain, where it's uh, you you listen to the US Fest and things like that. It's almost clean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's like there's there's no preamps on on ten. That's power no. amp mm -hmm. distortion. That's right. And, uh, I've always been into, you know, just kind of my gain on my heads. If you looked at most of them, is three or four. Yeah. It's yeah. like, but, you know, I'll crank the head. Of or course. Get the sound, you know, post. Um, yeah. The, it's just, I also just like playing, you know, more staccato 
type of stuff and the chicken picking and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It just works better. My style works better with with uh, that kind of sound. So I agree. You know, whatever works for, for that's everyone. Right. That's right. Great. We have five minutes left, and I told you 90 minutes was going to feel like about 40. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go away without asking you this. Um, so yeah. obviously this is a very, very close in the same wheelhouse on an EVH gear show. Uh, okay. uh, Jackson and Charvel, same family. T tell us a little yeah. bit about those guitars that you play. Obviously you endorse them. Um, what makes both of those guitars so special? Can you share anything about uh, certain models, whatever, that are really, really special to you? Obviously they get the FU tone treatment, but tell us about the guitars themselves. Well, yes, I've, I've been with uh, Charvel Jackson and Jackson since uh, 2011 when Adrenaline Mop was, uh, was launched. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, big shout out to, to my pal, Mike Tempesta. He's been with me since day one. I, I love him. And, uh, and the guitars are great. What can I say? <laughs> you know, I, there's, there's so many great things about it. Uh, the Charvels, uh, from the SoCals to... Uh, you know, I, I had a custom one that was made from for myself, which um, was was kind of brought back to life because it was very, very, almost completely destroyed uh, in the accident. Yes, but they made such an incredible uh, model for me, from my to my specs, what I liked and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So their custom shop is unbelievable. Um, the Jackson side of it. They're great, you know. The soloists are, you know, they they play themselves. They're, they're so, uh, you know, they're, they're so fluid and so so comfortable to play. Um, my Charvels now, what I what I will be playing from this uh, point forward are the new DK twenty fours. They're great. It's a, it's a, they're super strat kind of SoCal style, but it's got the uh, a slicker body and twenty four frets, which I absolutely love. Uh, you know, and uh, they feel great. They they have a worn in feel when you when you get them. The, the new DK twenty fours they're they're incredible, and uh, they have all the bells and whistles, and they're just ready to ready to scream. So I've always loved them. They they all sound great. Um, I usually always throw in the, you know Tomazios. I'm an evolution guy for a long time, um, but the guitars sound great with any pickups in them they're just mm -hmm. uh, they're they're made perfect you know in my opinion uh, so yeah huge great, great huge advocate kid of Chavo and jackson for sure they're definitely well appreciated here as well too before we go have you speaking of pickups have you tried adam's pickups yet i have not i can't wait we had this talk the other day so <laughs> i'm coming to the new duplex and that's it it's it's fu time Awesome. I have a set here. And Adam, this is a hint. This is a subtle hint. I didn't want to bother you because you got back from your birthday uh, trip, a spectacular birthday trip. I need some wiring specs. I'm going to put them in a real nice PRS. I've got a beautiful PRS here, but it's a five-way rotary. And I think that's the guitar for them. Um, but I don't know what I'm doing because uh, it's like a, du it's a dual wire for each pickup. And I don't know what I'm doing, but he says he can get me some specs for it. So um, I want to tie that into the PRS. I think it's going to smoke. If done, Adam will do it. Yep. Yep. For okay. sure. If it can be done, and he'll figure it out somehow. He's That's right. Done. I could not agree more. Yeah. Listen, you did it, man. Ninety minutes. Thank you so oh, very much man. for joining us. Dude, it was great. It was. I, I had such a great time. Again, talking guitars is the greatest therapy there is. Uh, you know, and and thank you, everyone, for your questions and and, and chiming in, and thank you especially and, and EVH uh, here and TV and and EVH themselves. And yeah. Everyone companies uh you know huge fan of, of uh, products and the company and uh just thanks across the board man this has been this has been a blast awesome well i appreciate it i'm glad you had a good time i'm going to say goodbye to you uh off the air so i don't go away yet everyone thank you so very very much for tuning in um bunch of shows coming still up on the radar we've got uh, helix hour over on uh sunday at 3 p.m eastern standard time and coming up on wednesday a very irregular time but five o'clock Eastern Time, Paul Gilbert's on the show. It's gonna. We're doing a special uh, evening there to accommodate his schedule. It was either five o'clock in the afternoon my time, or it was one o'clock in the morning. So I think we took five o'clock. <laughs> That's so, a better one. Yeah, it's a little bit better for uh, for views for sure. But uh, don't go away, and I'm gonna say goodbye to you off the air. Everyone, you have a fantastic weekend. Be safe out there, and we will see you next time. Cheers. Bye bye, guys. Bye.
I am now on Patreon. If you enjoy my content and wish to support my channel and what I do, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash evhgeartv. Your support assures a continued growth of this channel and a fun community in which to share our love for Van Halen, music gear, and much more. Video production services provided by Design 39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com.